following the button. So let's just get some general styles in here first. Uh, as far as the body goes, I want to add a background, let's say background image, and I'm going to use a linear gradient. So we'll say linear gradient. Let's do a 90 degree gradient. And for colors, we'll do the hexadecimal value of 75FFF. And let's do hexadecimal 7158E2. Okay, so those are going to be our colors. And we need to put a semicolon here that I forgot. Where am I? Where's my cursor? Okay, so now we have that background gradient. You can probably make this a little smaller here. Okay, that's our background. Now we want to display flex, align everything to the center. We don't need we don't need uh, where is it flex direction as a column. Height 100 viewports, good. The search class. I'm going to position this relative so we can position things inside of it absolute and let's set the initial height here to 50 pixels and then for the input wait, that has a class of input actually let's do search input and let's set a background color of white and let's set a border of zero take away any border and I'm going to make the font size 18 pixels. So we'll make that a little bigger. And let's set the padding on this to 15 pixels all around. And we'll set the height to 50 pixels. And let's set the width to 50 pixels. So it's going to start off short like this, but then we'll have an animation or a transition to expand it. Um, so I want to add here a transition on the width property. OK, so we want the width to have a transition that's going to last 0.3 seconds with an ease effect. Now for the button, let's style that. So that has a class of BTN. And we're going to set a background color of white. And let's set a border of zero. We want the cursor to be a pointer when we hover over it. We want a font size of 24 pixels. So remember, this is the button with the icon. And I want to position this absolute within the um, within the search class here search container and let's say from the top zero and from the left zero and then we're going to give this a height and a width of 50 pixels okay so it puts it right in the middle there and then i want to tr uh, transition on this because what we want to do with the button is move it over we want the the input to to expand the width we have the transition for that up here. Uh, the button we want to push over. OK, so the, the input gets wider, the button gets pushed over. So we'll use transform on that. So we want to add a transition for transform. Same amount of time as the width on the input and an ease effect. OK, and then we want to get rid of any outline. So let's grab, let's say the BTN when it's in its focus state and also the input when it's in its focus state. We want to set the outline to none. OK, so now we don't see that outline. Um, and then finally, we want to take the search input, but when it's active. So the search class, if it has an active class, then we want the input to go to 200 pixels from what was it 50? Yeah, so it starts at 50 and then when it had when the search element has uh, an active class on it, then the width will go to 200. And then we also want the button to move over. We have a, tra a transition on the transform, but we haven't actually created that yet. So also when the search 
has the class of active on it, then we want to take the button and we want to set transform and we want to move it. We want to move it along the X axis. We want to move it to the right so we can use translate X. So translate on the X axis and we'll move it over 198 pixels. All right. So if I save that. We're not going to see any difference here because we need a little bit of JavaScript to be able to give it that class. And you'll see if I manually put on the active class here, there we go. It expands. So JavaScript is going to be really simple. Let's go ahead and bring in the search. So document dot uh, query selector. And we want to grab the class of search and then let's also grab the BTN. BTN and then let's grab the input input and then I'm going to take the button and we want an event listener on that. So we want to add an event listener of a click event. And when we click, we're going to call an arrow function here. And all we want to do is take the search. Remember the search div, which I just showed you if I put an active class on that, it, it widens it out, pushes the button over. So that's what we want to do. We want to say from search, we have our class list and then there's a method called toggle to toggle a class, basically just add and remove it. So we'll, we'll toggle the class of active. I also want to set focus on the input, which we can just use the focus method. All right. So if I go over here and I click, It not only opens it and you know pushes the button over, widens the input, but it also focuses in the in there. And if I click, goes back. And you can see just from the projects we've done so far and some of the ones that we're going to do, a lot of this just it's all just putting specific classes uh, through our JavaScript through events, you know, clicking or hovering over something and making an event fire off where we just add or remove or toggle a class. And then we have a transition to give us a cool little animation. So there's very little need for something like jQuery um, to do stuff like this anymore. You just use vanilla JavaScript to mix with CSS and you can do just about any kind of animation that you can do with jQuery pretty easily.